Welcome back to Baking with Love. I'm Carolyn Stella Taylor, aka Stella, coming to you from the Peg TV Kitchen Studio. And today I'd like to share with you my recipe for what I call red, white, and blueberry trifle. Trifle is an interesting word. In fact, its first definition is something unimportant, and that is not what I'm making today. The second definition is exactly what we're making. It's a uh, dessert that originated in England. Recipes date back into the 1500s, and it's usually made with a plain cake, which may or may not be soaked in spirits, um, fruit or preserves, and cream or custard. So something cakey, something fruity, and something creamy. And that's what we're gonna make today. But for our cake, I'd like to make an angel food cake. So you might make this as a standalone dessert, uh, the angel food cake, or you might incorporate it into your trifle. So let's get started with our angel food cake and we'll talk a little bit more about trifles as we bake. So we're gonna use a uh, stand mixer today. Uh, angel food cakes originated in the US in the about the 1830s, but they didn't come into po more popularity until later in the 1800s, thanks to this guy, the rotary hand mixer. So uh, before that, people had to whip the egg whites by hand, and it was pretty laborious. So you can use a hand mixer, but we're gonna use the stand mixer today. Now, you might remember uh, the macaroon episode, I showed you how to separate eggs. So I wouldn't, I'm not gonna do that today, but here we have one and three quarter cup of egg whites. You can save the yolks if you wanna make um, some other recipes with them, or like me, you can cook them and feed them to your dogs. But we're going to put one and three quarters of cups of egg whites in our bowl of our stand mixer fitted with our whisk attachment. And then we're gonna turn that on and start to whisk it. Angel food cakes may have been used by the Pennsylvania Dutch uh, as a wedding cake, and they said the couple was blessed by angels. So once the egg whites start to get a little foamy, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of warm water. I warmed this up beforehand, and that actually helps break up uh, the egg white protein albumin a little bit. So we started breaking up the protein. We're gonna get this so nice and light and airy. That's essentially what we're doing right now to the egg whites is aerating them. Then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna turn up the speed. One and a half teaspoons, which is actually a half a tablespoon of cream of tartar. So cream of tartar is not creamy. As you can see, it's a white powder. And it's actually made as a byproduct of the fermentation process for wine making. So cream of tartar is actually uh, tartaric acid. That's where the tartar word comes from. And uh, that's going to help uh, also increase the volume. It's a whipping agent. It's also going to whiten our egg whites even more because we want a red, white, and blue trifle and a nice white angel food cake. And now I'm going to add uh, one te two teaspoons, two teaspoons of real vanilla extract. And we're going to keep heating that up until kind of stiff peaks form. It's getting there. Oh, and don't forget, a cup of love. We always add the love on this show. We're going to be adding it in each phase of our recipe today. So we've got our love. Still mixing. All right, let me, while that mixes, let me tell you what I did before you got here. Uh, this cake requires some sifting. So I used one cup of cake flour, also from the macaroon recipe. You might remember cake flour has less protein and more starch than all-purpose flour. So uh, it's going to make our cake nice and light. And super fine sugar. Super fine is also called quick dissolve sometimes or caster sugar. If you can't find it, I have a nice hack. You can use granulated sugar in your food processor with the blade attachment and just pulse it a few times to make it super fine. But what I did was I uh, sifted one cup of cake flour once, and then I sifted three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar plus the one cup of cake flour four more times. And that's what's in this bowl. So a uh, little sifting is involved, but I did that before you got here to save some time. 
So now our egg white mixture is really foamy. It's almost filling our bowl. We have an additional three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. And we're gonna add that about a quarter cup at a time to our egg white mixture. Just gradually, it's gonna puff up even more. This whole bowl is now almost full with a white fluffy cloud of egg whites. It's really looking good. Okay, this is again super fine sugar. If you don't have it, I taught you how to make it yourself. Super easy. Super fine sugar is also used in beverages a lot. Just dissolves that much faster. I'm going to turn this off and take a look and also scrape down the bowl for a sec. And you can see how fluffy our egg whites are. That looks good. But you can see also the volume. Let me give it one more spin since I scraped that. All right, since it's filling this bowl so nicely, I'm going to transfer this to an even bigger bowl and then I'm gonna fold in the flour, the sifted flour and um, super fine sugar. So we're just gonna unlock this. There's those egg whites. Can you see how nice and fluffy that looks? And I'm just going to very gently with my spatula transfer this bowl from our stand mixer uh, full of egg whites. Nice. And that cream of tartar, again, is a little bit of an acid that kind of makes our egg whites a little whiter, kind of bleaches them. I want to get every bit of all that fluffy goodness. It is like, a, it's as light as a cloud. Okay, so now we're going to add in small amounts, maybe five or six additions, our sifted uh, cake flour and super fine sugar. And to do that, just sprinkle a little on and start to mix from bottom to top. And very gently, again, we want to be kind to our egg whites. And you want to make sure that you incorporate any of the powderiness of the flour. And you can also kind of give the bowl a little turn as you do this. And you know how Angel Food Cake got its name, supposedly. It's so light that angels can eat it and still fly. Yep. And you probably know the arch nemesis of Angel Food Cake, which might be one of your favorite cakes if you're a chocolate lover, Devil's Food Cake. But as you noticed, in our Angel Food Cake, we didn't use any egg whites, I mean any egg yolks, excuse me, uh, so there's no cholesterol. We didn't use any butter. So some people even consider angel food cake uh, a diet cake. It does have sugar, but it is very light. And we aren't, and I'll talk about the pan in just a sec, we aren't even going to grease our pan. So really, uh, no, no butter involved in this recipe whatsoever. The reason we don't grease the pan is because the batter needs to cling to the sides. That way it can kind of climb its way up. And if you grease it, it's going to slip right down. So we're going to use a dry cake pan today. And I'll show you that in just a sec. So this is getting there. I think that's our last little bit of flour. And again, you want to be gentle as you mix this and make sure everything is blend it in. Almost there. You don't want any streaks of flour or sugar mixture. All right, that looks like it's ready for our special angel food cake pan. So we'll talk a little bit about that and then I'll transfer the batter. So a traditional angel food cake pan is a tube pan like this. And some have little feet, which is very handy because we're going to cool it 
upside down. We cool it upside down so that when it cools, it doesn't compress um, all that nice light airiness. And it should have a tube in the center. So if you don't have a pan like this, you can use a tube pan. And this one's handy because it's a spring form pan. So that'll help in releasing the cake. Because as I mentioned, we don't have any um, cooking spray or it's not buttered or anything like that. So we're gonna transfer it to our angel food cake pan very lightly and just go move around the tube, plop it in gently, and then we're gonna smooth it out because we want to try not to have any big air bubbles. We like all those little air bubbles that we created beating our egg whites up so nice. Just try to make it even. And then it's also a good idea to run a knife through the batter just to break up any bigger air pockets before baking. So get this scooped out all around the tube, get every bit, and it will rise up thanks to the fact that the pan is not greased. Okay, so now just oops, smooth this lightly, just a light touch. That's how the angels like it. And then we're going to bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, it will get a little golden on top and have some cracks through which you'll see the nice white color. Again, I just need to balance this side out a little bit, make it equal height and This looks like it's ready to bake. One last step is that knife that I mentioned. Just get my hands away. So we're just gonna take this and go right around one or two times, make a little spiral. And again, that's to get that off the tube. That's to just break up any air bubbles that might be in there. All right, so this is ready for, I'm not gonna be using this one today, but this one is also handy. Ready for our 350 degree oven. And 35 to 40 minutes. But with our PEG TV time machine, we can go 40 minutes into the future and our finished angel food cake, voila. Now. This pan, as you can see, does not have those little feet. So what we would have to do is put it on cooling racks. I'll move these over and work over here. We put it on cooling racks uh, upside down until it's totally cool, which could be, I don't know, one to three hours, something like that. So that's how you would cool it. Some people use a bottle um, right here. If your bottleneck is narrow enough to fit in your tube, you can turn it over, but be careful. Make sure your bottle's full and heavy because it can be a little tippy. I know from experience, so I'm not using the bottle method today. And then to get your cake out, you can use a knife or a little offset spatula like this. You're gonna go around the edge of your pan because remember there was no butter or cooking spray, so there'll be a few crumbs. And then also you can use a little knife or butter knife to get around the tube. And then we're going to remove our, I'll move it onto here, remove our angel food cake to a cutting board or a plate. If you're not making it for a trifle, you can just put it on your cake platter. And there you have it. And again, you can, some of the crumbs just come from inching your way around. So there's that nice white fluffy cake. Now, if you have extra, you can slice it and um, freeze the slices. It's good to individually wrap them and they stay uh, nice. This is a slice that I had from a previous cake, came out of the freezer looking just perfect. Now to cut an angel food cake, we just did all that work, uh, whipping it up and cooling it upside down. Uh, you don't wanna compress it when you go to cut it. So it's recommended that you use a serrated knife and you kind of saw with it. You don't slice with it. So you kind of just go like that 
and like that, and you have a nice airy cake still that doesn't get pressed down. And these are the pieces that we're going to use for our trifle. So we'll leave this cake and we'll get to our trifle. Now, that's the cakey part. We need the creamy part. So I'm going to whip some cream. And also, before you got here, I made an instant pudding and I chose to use white chocolate because this is a red, white, and blue uh, trifle. So I like to whip cream with very cold stuff. So I had my bowl in the fridge and I even had my beaters in the fridge. So we're going to make a little sweetened whipped cream and we're going to fold that in to our already prepared uh, instant pudding. I didn't think I needed to teach you instant pudding, but I will mention how I made it. So it was two cups of cold whole milk and the pudding packet and it got beat uh, about medium to high speed for about five minutes till it started to set up. So that's our white chocolate pudding. Now, you know I love to talk about variations uh, on Baking with Love, and we can definitely uh, substitute vanilla. I think vanilla doesn't look as white uh, for our red, white, and blue, and uh, or cheesecake flavor for this one. But if you're making another trifle, you could use pistachio, butterscotch, whatever you'd like. So let's start beating our cream. And we're going to add some love to that also. And we also will uh, add a little confectionery sugar and a little vanilla extract. So this is 12 ounces of heavy cream, cold, in a cold bowl with cold beaters. Kind of wanted to speed up the process for you. Oh, and a couple of. So we have love in our cake. We have love in our cream. And when we arrange the berries, you'll see how we put the love into that part of our cake. Now, as I said, trifle recipes have been around since the 1500s. And they think they were devised to, as a way to use um, leftover cake or stale cake. And that's why a lot of the trifle recipes soak the cake in uh, spirits. Uh, could be rum, could be wine, uh, brandy. But we're using a fresh cake, so we don't need that step. But if you want to find uh, a trifle that contains alcohol, there's many recipes. In fact, another name for trifle was sometimes a drunken cake and also called a tipsy parson. Uh, I guess if uh, the church fathers went to somebody's house for dinner and didn't know he was being served a uh, alcohol lace trifle, he might end up uh, being a little leaky. So we're whipping our cream. And we're going to add four and a half tablespoons of confectionery sugar. So once it starts to get soft peaks, I'm going to add just a little of the confectionery sugar at a time. And then I'm also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oh, other trifle facts. The world's largest or heaviest trifle was created in Nottingham, England in 1990. It weighed 3.13 metric tons, which is about 6,900 pounds. And just to give you an idea, that's about the weight of a Chevy Suburban. So that trifle was not a trifle, right? The other definition, something insignificant. And then we keep feeding this whipped cream Getting soft peaks right now. You want firm peaks. Give it a little boost. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm going to turn this off for a sec so we won't have the noise. And then just measure my vanilla extract. One teaspoon. Add that. There's a few more drops of whip in there. And then keep beating. So we're going to make this trifle red, white, and blue, as I mentioned, which would make it a great dessert for summer barbecues. Uh, you could definitely substitute other fruit for this. You could use peaches, because who doesn't like peaches and cream? Uh, you could use a, a pound cake instead of an angel food cake. 
uh, I just thought the pound cake like the uh, vanilla pudding would make it a little more yellow and I was going for the nice whiteness of the stripes, red, white, and blue. Um, and also sponge cake. Trifles are also made with sponge cake. All right, that looks good. All right, so we've got our whipped cream with love. We've got our uh, instant white chocolate pudding, and I'm gonna fold the whipped cream in, and we're going to give it a mix, and that's gonna be essentially our custard. So again, trifles are something cakey, something creamy, and something fruity. And the fruit also can be preserves. Some people, and uh, there's another recipe that, uh, dessert that comes from England, and they think that the trifle is a variation of that, and it's called a fool. And the fool was usually a custard and a, a stewed fruit, so that did not have uh, the cake element that our trifle does. So we are mixing our instant white chocolate pudding with our sweetened whipped cream, and now we're going to start, finally, we're gonna start to build our red, white, and blueberry trifle. So trifles are traditionally made in trifle bowls. This is a trifle bowl, and they usually have a little stem or foot. If you don't have a trifle bowl, any glass bowl will do. It's nice to have clear glass so that you can see the beauty of the layers that we're going to create. So let's start with one third of our cream mixture. That's the bottom layer. So I'm just gonna transfer some of this in, enough to coat the bottom of your trifle bowl. And then we're going to have a fruit layer. In this case, strawberries and blueberries combined. And just, I sliced them before you got here, but you can slice your strawberries any way that you'd like. And I'm just going to, oops, lay them, that one was lively. I'm just gonna lay them down on top of the cream. And you want to have, bear, you know, you want to have fruit in every bite, no matter where somebody digs into this thing. So I'm just going to make kind of circles around. And now I mentioned how we put the love into the trifle. I'm going to show you um, an example of a little design you can do. You don't have to do this step, but so that the fruit shows up a little bit more. You'll see a little bit the way it is once we start layering. But if you really want it to be noticeable as a red stripe, I'm going to line the outside edge of the trifle bowl with our berry slices. And again, this is optional. It just is a little bit more attention to detail and you're welcome to skip this step if you would like. But I, again, we're baking with love and we want to make it this red, white, and blue. So this way, the red will really pop and then we'll do something similar when we get to our blueberry layer. So we've got our strawberries already sliced. Again, you can do that ahead. The other nice thing about this is it's gonna need time to set. So at least two hours in the fridge, but you can make it ahead. It'll be good for a couple days. So if you wanted to, you can put this in the fridge, make ahead, and then you can very easily take it with you if you're going somewhere or take it out for your guests. So there's my red stripe. And then as far as the blueberries go, I'm just gonna get, again, a generous uh, sprinkling so that anytime somebody digs in, they're gonna get both strawberries and blueberries. And then we're going to make our next layer which is our angel food cake cubes. So I, again, using a serrated knife, I kind of sawed our angel food cake into these bite-sized pieces, and we're gonna top our berries with the angel food cake. And again, you wanna just have an even distribution, a nice layer all the way around, and then we're going to repeat. So we're going to use another third of our cream, custard, pudding, whip mixture. And another, you can kind of squeeze these in because they're very, they're very spongy. They're very 
very soft and light. So if you want to get another piece in there in the crevices, you can. Okay, another third of our creamy mixture. Again, enough to cover the cake. Give that a nice push. I might need a little more for this layer. And get it coated. Now this will also make the cake kind of nice and soggy. It's kind of like a tiramisu, only tiramisu doesn't have the fruit. They soak the lady fingers in the espresso. Okay, so now we've got our cake layer covered again. We're gonna repeat our fruit layer, but this time, again, the love, around the outside edge, I'm going to stand up some blueberries to make our blue stripe. So I'm gonna try to pick some of the bigger blueberries, um, and I'm gonna move this one I had as a topper. Um, the blueberries can kind of be like pressing their noses up against the glass of the trifle bowl. So strawberries again, blueberries again, and any way that you'd like to arrange them. And then I'm going to go around the edge of the bowl with the blueberries. Again, okay. you can't rush the love. All right, almost done with this layer of fruit. And now a sprinkling of blueberries like I did on the other layer, but that additional attention to kind of getting them all along the edge, like so. Make a row, and again, sometimes the bigger berries are a little bit more noticeable if you want to sort through. I did go through these berries before, make sure there were no stems, rinse them off. Same thing when I did the strawberries. Um, you know, cut, cut off any parts that might be a little bruised or soggy. There's our blue stripe. And now repeat with the final, oh no, we've got to put our cake again, another layer of angel food, our final layer of angel food. So right up to the top of our trifle bowl. You might have a larger trifle bowl than this. You can keep going with your layers. And then finally, we're gonna end it with cream and a nice design with our berries on top. If you, if you were doing this for a birthday, you might be able to write happy birthday. If you're doing it for 4th of July, maybe you could take your berries and write uh, happy 4th or make the berries look like fireworks or something fun like that. All right, our final layer of creamy, whip with that white chocolate instant pudding goes on top and we're going to smooth that out really it's perfect fit it's going right to the edge going to cover your angel food cake give it a little turn and now for the top again the love a little design i'm going to add a few raspberries so it'll just give it a little more berry texture and a little pop of raspberry color. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this in the middle. If you are using it for a birthday, this would be a great place to stick your candle. But we're gonna just take our sliced strawberries and go around the edge. In between, if you want, you can put a little blueberry. And we're going to Put a, I will put a ring of blueberries. I can't wait to make this design. It's kind of like a mandala. You can meditate on this trifle. Let's see, a couple more slices. I have more strawberries in the fridge, but probably not gonna have time to slice them for you. So we'll just do what we have. We'll do a ring of blueberries all the way around. And you can get as creative as you'd like. If you have kids, maybe you can make a face, um, all kinds of fun things. And then we're going to have our raspberries come into play. That one's a little tall, that berry. And again, maybe our center is raspberries. You might be able to stick raspberries in between the strawberries. And 
our fine, our piece de resistance, a beautiful strawberry center. And there you have red, white, and blueberry trifle, perfect for your 4th of July or any barbecue or any time. And June 7th happens to be ha National Have Trifle for Breakfast Day. So maybe you want to make this trifle and celebrate. But really, any time this trifle would be great. And again, as far as variations go, you can use store-bought angel food cake if you want to skip baking, or a box mix. I had a little box over there. Uh, you could skip the whipped cream, and if you don't want to whipped cream yourself, you could use uh, cool whip. Uh, you still have to make the pudding, but other than that, it would be a really easy, fast, fun, cool dessert. But you do have to put it in the fridge to chill, so I'll do that now and about two hours, but overnight is fine. And you can also make it ahead. Oh, my berry just makes it. So that's your red, white, and blue tr blueberry trifle made with love and homemade angel food cake. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. And again, this recipe is nothing to be trifled with. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time on Baking with Love. <laughs>